Hi everyone, you ready for operational excellence? We're going to go back to Japan and we're going to go to a Toyota supplier. And what the supplier does, they get large coils of steel right from the mill. They slit those coils of steel down. They turn them into flat sheet stock as well as coils. And then they sell them to secondary suppliers to Toyota that make different kinds of parts. It's a very visionary company. It's an amazing company and you're gonna see some awesome stuff. So here you go, let's get going. First of all, here are the typical automotive parts that are made out of the material that they supply to sheet metal stampers. So they have a nice little display here showing the different components and where they belong on the car so their employees know what they're fabricating, whether it be the housing for a transmission or whatever it is. Now, this is at the very end of the line. So the sheet stock is being bundled here and they have some great processes that are really cool they have these magnetic little tags that go on there so this one they're gonna build four bundles of this so they have this little magnetic tag that says one of one one of two so this is two of three right here so he puts a magnetic tag on there then they have all the different tags there so as they build an order they have all these magnetic tags that go back and forth it's just very lean very simple the way they manage the whole system here is the material being stamped out and sheet fed into there and then being stamped and these are the coils now they take a barcode and the barcode tells them everything that's in this particular aisle so that the crane then can identify where to pick the coil from for the order. Now all the steel, this is only three days worth of steel. They blow through this pretty quickly. Every work order has a barcode on it as well. And that barcode, once it's scanned, tells you exactly where the coil is that they need to pick with the crane. So it's very cool. And then when they slit the rolls, they go on these little dollies that are all automated and they have little computers on them that tell them exactly where to go. They have little arms that swing up for safety. If you're gonna do any repairs on a robot, you have to wear this vest. You go inside the robot cage so that people are visually able to see that you're doing a repair in there. There's no way they would turn a machine on. Of course, there's lockout, tag out. Now the Japanese are great at visual controls. So right here, you can see this U-shape picker that the crane would grab. The key is that when the operator is working this, he has to stand in the white box with the red ring around it for safety. We've gone 104 days without any accidents at all in any regard, whether it be a scrape, a cut, or anything. They're very safety conscious. Now you're gonna see the most amazing thing of all, a quick die change or SMED. So all these slitters have to be changed five times an hour because they're constantly slitting these master coils down to very precise sizes for the people that buy the coils from them. So this machinery is highly automated, but they have robots that are actually going to build the die configuration and then change them out on a machine in about 60 seconds. You're not gonna believe what you're gonna see right now. It is crazy what's gonna happen. These are dies that are ready to be inserted into the machine. You can see it's taking the old dies out here on the bottom. That's the old ones that are coming out. And then those are gonna go down. Watch what's gonna happen here. And then the new ones that have been set up by the robot, these gigantic dies, are gonna be inserted into the machine. And then the old ones will be taken out and disassembled by the robot all the different slitters and spacers. The spacers are yellow and blue. The slitters are the silver color, the metal color. They will be put back on the rack in the appropriate position and the robot will build the next die configuration. So that die was just changed out that quick. It is crazy. So you have two blank cylinders on the top that need to be built and you have two complete dies on the bottom and now the robots on both sides are gonna start disassembling this and then reassembling the new ones while the machine is back running the current job. So here the robot now is gonna come in and start taking apart one die at a time, one ring at a time. It takes off the parts, places them back on the shelf. Now the shelves that are closest to you in the foreground, if you will, those are shelves with both spacers and slitters on them. So the robot's taking the parts off, putting them back on the rack in the appropriate place. So it's both disassembling and assembling at the same time for the new dies. So as the machine's running, it's building the next die set. 
So this is a very important part of SMED is you do all this work while the machine is running so the machine is not stopped. It's only stopped for maybe 60 seconds and then they can continue to run it. That's part of the whole SMED uh, single minute exchange of dyes which is from Shigeo Shingo. Richie Oshingo, my friend, his son, I've went over this so many times with him and watched it so many times side by side with him when I was on the factory floor. It seems like second nature now, I've seen it so much. But it's pretty cool, the automation and the sophistication that I see every time I go to Japan. I mean, they make everything look so easy. And it just happens, everything just runs like clockwork. Rarely do you ever see them miss a beat. Then we went over to some of their tool panels, very cool. They have everything shouted out and then if someone takes a tool, that's their name badge up on top, it's magnetic, it just sticks to it. For safety, you have to point both directions before you go across a crosswalk. I love this about Japanese culture. You see the train operators do this as well when they're operating. Now this was really cool. So each one of these stacks represents a different truck and a different driver. Every day, the driver is analyzed by computer on his driving. In addition, they all take a breath analysis before they drive. That's a small square tag. It's stamped. It shows the analysis, and then a supervisor is signed off on it. It also measures their speed. The max speed they can go on the side roads is 60 kilometers, 80 on a freeway, and it analyzes where they've done that. It even tells them if they're getting an A, B, or C on their driving. This guy got a C because three times in one hour, he revved up the gas a little too high, so he got a little lower score. They spend one hour a week training their drivers in training. They're so serious about teaching and training their people. That's what I love about coming to Japan is seeing how methodical they are. Now, this was my favorite thing of the whole place. So here we have are all the tape measures that all the employees use every day with their name on it. They have a cubby. All the tape measures are standardized. Every day when they come in, they have to take their tape measure and put it on a steel rule and check to make sure it's calibrated. They have five different criteria they have to check for on every tape measure to make sure it's ready to use. And they have to sign off in that blue book on every one of those five criteria, from the hook being bent, the hook being calibrated, whether or not the marks are clear and legible, the tape measure's in good condition. Everything has to be just right because if they do the process of measuring and it's off in one place, they've potentially wasted thousands and thousands of dollars. So what do they do? They make sure the tape measures are accurate so they build quality into the process. This is what TPS is all about, making sure quality is at every step. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick little tour of a metal fabricator in Japan. Operational excellence is fun for me to look at, learn from, and experience. I always think to myself, wow, I have so far to go. These people just have it all figured out. But it sure is fun learning and experiencing excellence at this level in Japan. We'll see you next time.